Good morning, or whatever time of day you are watching this Kingsway Lambton Worships at Home service. I'm the Reverend Carrie Stover, in ministry with the Reverend Hugh D. Reed. We're pleased to welcome you to this worship service. Now, where I'm standing today, it's a beautiful day, wonderful day, low humidity, and I'm listening to some wonderful sounds in the background. There's some cyclists that have just gone by, cars that are pulling up here to the intersection of Kingsway and Prince Edward. And it's so nice to just listen to the, I think it's the cicadas that are singing their song as well, telling us about the storm, the rain that we'll have in the next day. Friends, Maybe that's what it's all about. Sometimes it's just taking time to listen. To listen to our surroundings. To listen to the voice of God in our lives. So I encourage you to take some time either today or during the week. Maybe try and make it a habit every single day. To listen. To listen to the sounds of summer to listen to the sounds of creation, to listen for God's voice in our lives. Welcome again to Kingsway Lambton Worships at Home. I'd like to take this time to thank Lucas Kuypers, one of our tection, tenor section leads, and Scott Downing on piano for the beautiful music of the hymns and the solo during our service this morning. Also, Santiago, for the beautifully manicured lawn that I'm standing on and taking care of the outside as well as the inside of the building while it is closed. This is a great space to be. We will meet here for Lemonade on the Lawn following the regular church service time at about 11.30 on Sunday mornings. So if you're up to it and the weather permits us to be here, I invite you to join me on this wonderful green space outside the church. Face masks are encouraged as we physically distance. We'll have hula hoops here on the lawn so that you'll know how to stay apart. I also bring with me a hockey stick if I have to do any enforcing of the two meter rule. But I do encourage you to bring your own lemonade, maybe a lawn chair, and just come and enjoy meeting with friends and our neighbors here at Kingsway Lambton United Church. Now I'm going to ask you to call us into worship. Come, gather, breathe. You who have borne the burden of the week and the heat of the day. Let us join together in our opening hymn. I see. 
I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. God of light and love, you make all things new. We are blessed to be together in this time of worship. You invite all, regardless of ethnicity, gender, sexual identity, age, mental and physical ability, and into your fold to receive your blessing. Justice and right relations have their source in you. We are filled with joy to be loved as your children. As we gather, make us one in worship and thanksgiving. We lift our voices to proclaim your all-encompassing love. May our praise be united with the praise of all your people. You are our Savior and our hope, and we come to say thanks during our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in our prayer of confession and renewal. Let us pray. Lord, your redeeming word of love and acceptance is rest for the weary and a light for our paths. Forgive us when we seek rest where there is no rest. Forgive us our missed opportunities to forgive, to love, to heal, to grow. By what you have done in Jesus for all creation, you have revealed true life, given eternal life, and opened every moment for new life. Restore us to you and to one another in this summer season of rest, growth, and renewal. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, remember and believe that anyone in Jesus Christ is a new creation. Behold, the past is finished and gone, the new has come. Whatever would hold your life to some bitterness, to a sin, or to a wound, has no right to your future. Our sins are forgiven. From this day forward, walk in newness of life. And thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we come to share the peace of Christ with one another, I'd like you to reach out this week if you know somebody in Red Lake, Ontario, where there's that terrible fire that's happening. Or if it's at all possible to reach out and help either the United Church or the Red Cross as they receive funds to help the people in Beirut, Lebanon. Two tragedies, different parts of the world. Still people are displaced. People are in sorrow. People are grieving. And as we exchange the peace of Christ, May all those in Red Lake or Beirut or other places where there are, is turmoil or, or just unrest know that the love is God with them. 
So friends, let us exchange the peace of Christ with family, friends, and neighbors. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us reach out to our family, friends, and neighbors, continuing to keep that connection alive with the love of Jesus in our lives. We have a lot of birthdays and one special wedding anniversary that I'm going to announce in a moment. But first to the birthdays, the good news of the birthdays. And Dorothy Foster, happy birthday on August the 18th. And Amanda Weatherall, our alto section lead in the choir, and who we heard just a few weeks ago in her beautiful solo and leading the anthems. Her birthday is on Wednesday, August the 19th. And then on August the 21st, Bev Judson celebrates another trip around the sun. Congratulations to all those celebrating birthdays. And for an anniversary this week, we have Esther and Hugh celebrating on the 19th, the Wednesday. So congratulations, Hugh and Esther. I believe it's your 37th wedding anniversary, if I've done my math correctly. So congratulations, and hope you have a wonderful celebration. And for all those that are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries or other special occasions, we light this candle in celebrating your good news and that the light of Christ is in you and will always be with you. Esther and Hugh, I ask you to blow out our match and we give thanks to God. And now Hugh will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we come to the offering once again, I just simply express my thanks for all the ways that you are supporting your church and what we are trying to accomplish through this time of COVID and through all times in this world which needs to know the love of God and to feel the service of God's love. I also thank you again for all you are doing to support your community in every way as we make progress against this terrible illness and as we continue to seek to be part of the story of God. Let us give thanks for being part of the promise. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh, gracious God, receive these our gifts together with the worship and service of our whole lives. Use them and us that all might know your promise unfolding in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Hear what God says to us today. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. 
He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. May God bless the reading of God's word. The text in Matthew 15 is as baffling as it is bizarre. A Canaanite woman comes to Jesus to heal her daughter. By the end of the story, her daughter has been healed. But between the crying and the healing, Jesus says some terrible things. I look at it on, he's arrogant, he's racist, he's misogynistic. He's just plain mean. Now, I always had the understanding that Jesus was truly human. But obviously, I don't want him to be too human. We want Jesus, I want Jesus to be squeaky clean and without any faults. And Matthew doesn't clean up this story in chapter 15. Matthew actually gives us a very human Jesus, and he describes a picture of this woman. She's a Canaanite woman. She's not one of Jesus' people. She's not a person of Israel. She's not a Jew. Should he be surprised? After all, he's gone to the region of Tyre and Sidon. 
which is not inhabited by too many Jewish people. This is her homeland, not Jesus. Matthew's choice of the word Canaanite seems a bit strange because by the time of Jesus, people were no longer called Canaanites. The name was no longer on the map. A bit like, you know, we would be called Yorkies instead of Trontonians. Taking back to the original name of the settlement of York until the city of Toronto was incorporated as a city as March, on March 1st, 1834. Matthew chooses Canaanite on purpose. Not only is she one of the others, she is part of the marginalized and oppressed people of the day. She is a woman who is rarely and who would never have been approaching a person like Jesus in her time, but she is desperate, desperate for a healing for her daughter. She seems to know who Jesus is. She begs him to heal her daughter who is tormented by a demon. She's desperate and comes right up to Jesus to ask for his help in saving her daughter. Some scriptural scholars claim that only women who spoke to men in public were either beggars or prostitutes. Is that how we want to see how people are that are different than us? Do we also make them into objects of oppression and marginalized based on their gender or sexual identity, their nationality or their color or their otherness? Of their abilities. The disciples don't want to think about such otherliness either. They want nothing to do with this Canaanite woman. Send her away, they tell Jesus. That's what they tried to do not long ago. But faced with more than 5,000 hungry people, which I spoke on two Sundays ago, they also said, said then, in the Gospel of Matthew, send them away. And Jesus said to them, you will give them something to eat. Now the Canaanite woman isn't going anywhere as we heard in what Leanne read for us. She may not be Jewish, but she calls out to, to Jesus in the language of the Jewish prayer, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. By doing that, she recognizes his heritage and his position of Lord of all, not just of the chosen. But Jesus isn't swayed by the familiar language. I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, he tells her. She won't give up. Lord, help me, she begs. This is where Jesus goes with the dog reference, a possible slur on being otherly rather than being of his own people. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, he says. But the Canaanite woman is feisty and stubborn. The life of her daughter is at stake. Now she argues with Jesus using his own words, more so than the Pharisees or the scribes or the Sadducees did when he, was on, when he will be on trial in the temple. The Canaanite woman says, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And when Jesus hears this, he says, Woman, great is your faith. But some would say she has had no confession of faith. Or has she? When she calls him Lord, she recognizes him as Jesus as Lord of all. A confession of faith from a woman who is second class, or maybe even third or fourth in a society of the day. 
She calls him Lord because she believes that he can do many things. He is the one, the true, the way. The feeding of the 5,000, the walking on the water, and the faith of Peter. The faith of all of us when we're in troubled times. When this woman says to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus finally heard. He listened with his heart and he learned that he came to believe, she came to believe in him. He listened with his heart and he learned that she came to believe in him. He listened with his heart. And then Jesus saves her daughter for saying that you may go and the demon has left your daughter. Jesus was converted that day to a larger vision of the commonwealth of God, the kingdom of God. Jesus saw, listened, and heard a revelation of God in the voice and in the face of the Canaanite woman. Matthew has placed the story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman between the two feeding stories, the feeding of the 5,000 that I preached on just a couple of uh, Sundays ago, and in the future, the feeding of the 4,000, another feeding story near the end of the Gospel of Matthew. The Canaanite woman, a person that is an other in society, taught Jesus that she and her daughter deserve more than crumbs. That she, like all others in society, like all others in society, are equal to those that Jesus came for, provided the way for, provided the light for. It's a lesson for our own day. And so if Jesus can be changed, can we? Every generation sees some people as other and puts them under a table. We could make a long list of the people that we see as different different race, different nationality, different customs, different abilities, different religion, different age. And our indigenous brothers and sisters have had to deal with being the others in their own land for centuries. Many times I've heard people, even my own friends, some of my family members who have spoken about what happened to my Canada. We've let too many immigrants in, and especially the refugees who do nothing for the money that the government has given them. They actually add nothing to our society is what I've heard. I've also heard, as some of you have heard me say before here, go back to your own country where you belong. My guess is that when I hear folks talking like that, that they like our Canada, our Ontario, our greater Toronto area, to be of people that look and act like themselves. We see it and hear it all around us in our daily lives, where Muslims, Hindus, black people, the homeless in our city, people from India, People from Southeast Asia or China, we see and refer to as the other. We don't see them as the beloved children of God. They are the Canaanites, not only in this country, but in other places in the world, in Europe, in Scandinavia, South America, and of course, the United States. It's actually happening on all continents. The others have become Canaanites to many in our country. 
But Jesus' mission is expanded by this woman's argument who challenges his understanding of the commonwealth of God, how all are children of God, that he was not just sent for the lost of Israel, but he was sent for all. She knew a deeper truth and she stuck with it. That is the message of the Black Lives Matter movement as well. They have a message that comes from listening to God in their lives, that comes from wanting to be equal, comes from wanting to be respected, and that justice may be for all. There's a deeper truth within this message today from Matthew's Gospel, where we are all beloved children of God, that we all deserve to live in society where justice and equality is for everyone, no matter what our background is, whatever our ability is, whatever our color is, whatever and wherever our origin of birth was. And perhaps the miracle, the deepest miracle in this text, is that the other helped Jesus hear through listening, and then he heard that deeper voice as it filled his heart. We've all had a sense of hearing and heeding, just as Christ is within each of us. When we listen with the ear of our heart, we listen to Christ and we learn from Jesus. When we listen with the ear of our heart, we listen to Christ who died for us, who rose for us, and we learn from Jesus. It is this listening that no one else can do for us. Each of us bears this responsibility for it is a gift that God has given to each of us to open our hearts to receive him. The listening that Jesus did changed the direction of his mission in Matthew's gospel. The work of Jesus expands to all through the words of the Canaanite woman, the other in society. The message for all of us today is to listen with our heart and then be persistent and come to him with a sense of our own needs and our helplessness and give him thanks for the gift that he has given us and for his love in our lives. And by doing so, we become part of the listening and learning about the way, the truth and the light and love of Christ, and be a part of the mission of acceptance of all at the table. Not just brushing off the crumbs for the others. For all the blessings and welcoming others into our lives, I say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you into a time of prayer. Let us pray for those that are in need of prayer, even ourselves. And with the, in between the intercessions today, our response will consist of me leading with, Come, Holy Spirit. And the response to that will be, Fill us, flow through our world. Let us pray. Loving God, in the calm, quiet of your presence, we pause from our daily tasks and activities and set aside our own interests and distractions to pray for the world and to focus on you. We remember before you and pray for all families in their daily life and work, 
our families, friends, and neighbors, those we work with, and those whose faces we recognize regularly but do not know. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. We pray for this community of faith, our United Church of Canada region, and congregations of other traditions and faiths near us, far from us. We also lift up those who serve in leadership positions and all who nurture faith. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. We pray for this community, our country, and governments throughout the world as well as those who work for justice, equality, freedom, and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. We pray for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, as well as those who are in danger, sorrow, in any kind of trouble, both near and far. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. We lift up those that need you to touch their hearts, as they are ones who commit acts of aggression towards others that may not be like them. We ask this so that they may recognize the evil of their actions and may turn to your way of peace and goodness, to be respectful for the life and dignity of every human being, regardless of religion, origin, wealth, age, mental or physical abilities, sexual identity or poverty. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. We pray for those people and situations on our hearts and minds this day. Especially those that are frontline or essential workers during this pandemic. The caregivers or helpers that are assisting loved ones or neighbors. And those that are ill or weary while waiting for a diagnosis. Or now have a diagnosis. We ask for your healing and comforting presence with Dave, Libby, Andrea, Kathleen, the mother of Anne McMinn, and for all those helping their loved ones in long-term care homes or in hospital or in their own homes. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us, flow through our world. We pray for the young family as they mourn the loss of their loved, beloved mother, grandma and great-grandma, Isabel, whose funeral was this past Monday. We also ask for your healing, comforting love for all those that have experienced the loss of a loved family member, friend, or neighbor. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, flow through our world. God, you are the source of peace and new possibility for us all. Help us trust in your grace for today and tomorrow. Fill us with the strength and hope we need to walk with you, united in your love, the love for others that we encounter on our journey. We ask all this through and by Jesus, the one who is the way and the light. Amen. As we're coming to the conclusion of this worship service, just a few announcements. There is an official board meeting on Tuesday, August the 18th from 7 to 9 p.m. via Zoom. 
So if you're an official board member, please have a look in your email for the details. There will be lemonade on the lawn, the lawn where I recorded the opening and welcoming to this service. We will physical distance, wear our masks, and I hope to see you there, weather permitting. If it does look like rain or we've had rain, we will not gather on the lawn. I want to remind you of the Alpha Online program that will start this September. Please contact Judy Crichton if you're interested. Now well, let us join our voices in praise as we come together to sing our final hymn of this worship service. Friends, along our journey, we will meet many people that are different than us. Not only by the color of the skin, but also by their nationality, by their gender, by their, by their sexual identity, by their mental and physical abilities. There are so many differences, but isn't that what makes us unique and beloved children of God? And for that, we give thanks and praise that there are differences. There are differences in this world, but we are all beloved. So go now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sustaining power and embrace of the Holy Spirit in your life and on your journey this day and forevermore, Amen.